So here's the integral we're doing right now. And when I first look at it and I see essentially 1 plus x squared in the denominator, I hope for an arc tan. But here I don't get it because there is x cubed on top and for arc tan I would just need to have 1 or something that can somehow give me 1. We've encountered a situation where there is a little bit of a mess on top, but we can see how to do something with it so that we're left with arc tan. But here we can't do it because it's x cubed on top, so no arc tan. So then I guess I look for, for log, because I begin to interpret this as 1 over something. So in order to have log, and I have 1 over something, I need the derivative of something, which is, in this case, it's 2x. And when I think about it, I don't even say 2x, because most of the time the coefficient is an unnecessary detail at this initial step. So I just say x. The derivative of the denominator is x. And I don't have x on top. Okay, so log doesn't work either. My next idea is to look at whatever's on top and interpret it as the derivative of something, just so that I don't have the top. It gets absorbed, according to the Russian way of thinking, into the d symbol. And I look at x cubed, and it's the derivative of x to the fourth. So it's good that I recognize that it's the derivative of x to the fourth, but then that needs to be the something in the chain rule. We want to see have f of something times the derivative of something. And so if the derivative of something is x cubed, and so the something itself is x to the fourth, then this becomes square root of that, right? And that doesn't help me either. Okay, so do you see how I'm revealing all of the thoughts that occur to me that I reject? Because I don't want you to have the impression that someone smarter than you looks at an integral like this and says, oh, here is the way to do it. They only do it because they go through the similar thought process themselves. And right now we've rejected three possibilities, but sometimes you have to reject ten before you stumble on the right one. So it's okay if you don't see it at first, just keep exploring. So the next thing I start doing is to see how I can split something, because as you've seen with tangent and some other functions, when you combine things, you lose the trace of where it came from, possibly, when you were differentiating, when things simplify. So you somehow have to unsimplify things to create that signature that was maybe missing after the simplification took place. And so the first thing I'll try to do and it will actually work. And why am I trying to do it? Because I've done this many times before, and it's in my, it's in my toolbox. And you should work on expanding your toolbox. So split x cubed into x squared and x. Let me write that, just because it's good to see it visually at least once. And now, I go with my instinct of absorbing things into the derivative. I basically have to recognize something as the derivative of something else. That's the key to using the chain rule in reverse. The last term in the chain rule is the derivative of something, so I have to find it in order to find my way back. So here, I start thinking of x as the derivative. What is it the derivative of? x squared. That's success, because everything else has x squared in it. So maybe it's not the right thing to do ultimately, but at least it enables you to do the next step, which is the substitution x squared. And once again, when I say x squared, I know there's also a coefficient of 1 half, so I drop all of that in, during the initial exploration. Now that I'm actually going to act upon it, I have to be very careful about the coefficients. So to be the derivative of x squared, it needs to be 2x, and I only have x. So I will mentally put a 2 in here and make up for it with a 1 half outside. So I'll do that in the next step. So I have 1 half outside, x squared. And now I use the approach that I introduced you to yesterday, even though you'll see throughout these examples that I'll be quite pragmatic. I'm not a stickler for the Soviet way. You know, sometimes you have to be flexible. Actually, I believe this is one of the examples where you would have to be flexible. But this is basically to remind you a recognition of the fact that x, essentially, is the derivative of x squared. 
And that's how I would sometimes read this. Derivative of x squared. It's just a way to document that you recognize it in that way. And so we have x squared plus 1. Now I think we're doing good because if we have x squared here, we have x squared here. And I realize, now I'm beginning to think, there will be a couple more steps. So just for economy of writing, I might as well, I might consider putting u in. And that will make some of you very happy. And in fact, it will make me very happy. This is where I would become a little bit more pragmatic and simplify my work going forward because I realize there is still a little bit of work being done here. So I want to be writing short expressions. So I will call it u. But let's imagine what will happen if I replace x squared with u. I'll just say it out loud, and I want you to imagine it in your head. This is u du divided by u plus 1. You're with me? OK. So how are we going to do this now? Yes, add and subtract 1. You would add 1 making the numerator exactly the same as the denominator, and subtract 1. And when you add 1, you end up with u plus 1 divided by u plus 1. That's just 1. And then minus 1 divided by the denominator. And now, there's, I'm not going to dwell on this, because you're perfectly familiar with what to do here. And now you have to remember that u equals x squared, so we're left with... Okay, 